So today I'm offering you a new setup guide for Nintendo 64 fans out there. This is the emulator RMG. And what I'm going to be doing in this setup guide is showing you how well this performs, as well as showing you what this emulator features in comparison with other N64 emulators that I've set up in the past on my channel. So I've done Simple 64 and also the famous Project 64 emulators, but this particular emulator, RMG, actually has extra features which I've not seen in N64 emulators in the past. So really this emulator is very good and if you're interested in getting really good smooth performance with some nice visuals for your N64 collection, then this video is for you. Check this one out. Okay then, so before I start today's setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss out on upcoming retro emulation content that I upload every day on my channel, Just Jamie. So we're looking at RMG then today, and it's a very good emulator allegedly, so we're going to test this one out and you can grab the latest copy of this which came out in early September this year, which is 2023, over on the GitHub, and if we just scroll down, we could download a reportable version of this emulator or a Windows setup version of it. I'm going to go for the portable. Now, the difference between both of these versions is that if you go for the setup, you'll go for an installation process, whereas a portable version, it's going to literally contain everything within a folder. So I'm going to go for this one just for simplicity. If you do go for the setup, then just install it. And if we head over to this wiki just here, and I'll leave the link in my description, we can see what this emulator actually offers. So it includes a few different GFX plugins. We got our audio plugin just here and several other things. So it seems like a very capable emulator. And bear in mind, I've done a setup guide for Simple 64, which was a very good emulator for a Nintendo 64 as well as Project 64. Now, from what I've read from reviews, this one's also good. So we're gonna test this out, like I say. Now, once you've downloaded the emulator, you're gonna end up with a zip folder. So for this one, what we're gonna do is create a new, so right click on your desktop, new folder. So just call this one N64 or whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. And what we're gonna do with this zip folder is just drag it into that folder I've just created. And we're going to open that up if we right click on that zip folder i'm using winrar you might be using a different extraction tool they all work the same and we're going to extract it and once everything's been extracted we can now delete the zip folder we no longer need that one and as we can see just here we got a lot of dll files so if we just take a look what we got here inside the plugin folder we've got a range of different folders inside which are called subfolders and inside GFX, here's our plugins, which it said on the wiki, which I showed you just a minute ago. So if we come out of here, let's actually open up this emulator. So right near the bottom, we got rmg.exe. That's the executable file. So let's just double left click. And here's what you're going to see when you open this up. So we need to select a ROM directory. Now, I've got everyone's favorite N64 game to test this with, and this is, of course, GoldenEye. So, inside of this N64 folder, just to make this a lot easier, I'm going to create a new folder and just call the folder Games. And I'm going to drag my game, GoldenEye, which is in .z64 file extension, I'm going to drag this into that Games folder. Now, if we go back to the emulator, we can select the ROM directory. And it also says just here that those file extensions are supported. So .n64, .z64, which is what I'm using, .v64, and it also supports 64 disk drive disks too. So let's actually select the ROM directory. So we're going to select that and we're going to go to desktop. Now, I've just made that games folder inside my N64 folder. So if I go inside there and highlight games, select folder, we can now see Golden Eye as appeared. Okay, so we're going to try opening up this game. So I'm going to double left. New controller in controller socket one. 
please power off and attach room shorter. So we need to controller obviously for this one. So rmg.exe again. And what we're going to do to set up a controller is go to settings and we're going to select input. And from input, we're going to keep this on player one, which is under your profile. Under input device, I'm going to select my Google Stadia controller, which is Bluetooth. So we're going to start mapping out this controller. So like I say, I'm using the Google Stadia and I'm going to press left click on up and I'm going to press up on my D-pad for the digital pad on the N64 controller. And again for down, left, right, and for the analog stick, as we know, the Nintendo 64 just had one of these in the middle. So I'm going to use my left analog stick for this one. Now, you've actually got a slide at the bottom here for the stick's sensitivity. So if you find it feels a little bit stiff whilst you're playing your game, then you can obviously slide this upwards or downwards to make it faster or slower. And don't forget, we've also got the L and the right triggers just here. So just again, I'm using my left shoulder button and my right shoulder button. Also got start just here and the Z trigger, I'm gonna map to my back left bumper. And your C buttons, I'm gonna just use my right analog stick to map the C buttons out. So obviously you don't need to do what I'm doing, but I'm going to try and do this to the best of my abilities for the games to respond as they should do. Okie doke, so we've mapped everything out now. And another interesting feature we've got here, which I don't see very often on standalone emulators, is hotkeys. If we go here, we can actually select hotkeys to shut down the system, to save and load states. So for now, I'm going to leave this blank, but that's up for you. But it's just another case of pressing and corresponding it with your controller. So I've just used left stick pushing down on that just to shut down the system. I'm going to test that in a minute. So OK, and we're going to go to OK. Okay, so GoldenEye is running really well, so let's look at some video enhancements. If we go to settings, graphics, and I'm just going to make you aware that you're going to see plugin settings here for Glide N64. So if we go back to the plugins, which is under settings, plugins, if you use a different plugin just here, you won't see that Glide N64 video enhancement window that I just had. So to do what I'm about to do, just make sure video plugin is selected to Glide N64. If we go to OK and go back to settings at the top in graphics, we can then make our games look a lot better. So windowed resolution by default, this is 640 by 480. And it says recommended is anything up to 1280 by 960. So obviously the higher up you go, it's going to look good. So if your computer can support that, then obviously by all means go right up to 1600 by 1200 or just do what the emulator recommends. Aspect ratio N64 games were really designed for 4 by 3 ratios. That's why it says recommended. If you put this on the 16 by 9, it's going to look okay, but a little stretch. So 4 by 3 really is recommended. If we go to enable vSync, that means any screen tear in your game will start disappearing. And at the top under anti-aliasing, by default, it says no anti-aliasing. So what anti-aliasing does 
is reduces and takes away jagged edges on objects and sprites, that type of thing. So you've got two options here for FXAA or we got FSAA. And if you select either one of these, you can then pull the slide to give that how much anti-aliasing. So obviously if you go right up to 16 times or even eight times, if you've got a potato of a computer, then your computer's likely gonna lag if you boost these all the way up. So just go to a modest setting, something like two times, and obviously that's gonna be a lot better than no anti-aliasing at all. And the same story for anastrophic filtering just here. If we drag this up to 16 times, it's going to provide a filter which is going to blur out the game so they're not going to be so pixelated. So again, just like anti-aliasing, just be very modest with your settings on this, otherwise lag is going to occur. And once you've popped in your settings, what we're going to do is just go down to settings profile, new, and you can call this whatever you want. So say just Jamie or whatever, and then just make sure you save and save and close because every time you open up this emulator those settings might potentially go walkies so just make sure that's done now we can actually add cover art to this emulator so you're not just putting up with just this boring bit of text here so to do this if we go to view game grid there you go and we can actually add some artwork to this as well so to do this you can just go to your favorite web browser i'm using google all i've done is enter goldeneye box n64 and i've just right clicked on the image save it image as and this is in jpeg format so just save it to wherever you want and let's actually put this in to the emulator so to do this if you just right click on the icon of your game set cover image and here's our images if you double left click we now have a nice bit of artwork for our game so if you've got many of these games in this emulator then it's gonna look pretty nice rather than just some boring old text and another nice feature with this emulator is that rather than checking up all the time if it's got updates we can actually do this at the top we go to help check for updates and as it says in my case i'm already using the latest version and that's it for today's RMG Nintendo 64 emulator setup guide. As you can see in the video, it's got some very impressive touches there where we can add artwork to the actual graphical user interface rather than having just plain boring text. In terms of video settings, then yeah, you can really make your N64 games look very good in this. So all around, I'd simply say this was a very capable N64 emulator from what I've tested on this one. And it's probably right up there with something like Project 64. So as usual, I investigate the world of emulators and this is how I came across this one. It's a great emulator and I'll leave the links in my description for you to download it yourselves and check it out. Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notifications and subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming content which i upload daily for retro emulation and also be sure to check me out on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time stay retro